well, what what purpose does belief in God serve or your faith in God, let's say? And I think belief, see, it's also really interesting to try to distinguish between belief in something and faith in something. Mm. Like if you have, imagine you have faith in the good. And so how do you demonstrate that? Well, you believe that good is more powerful than evil. You believe that you should act in a manner that's 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 uh, appropriate to the good. And so then you act that way. And that's the faith. The faith is demonstrated in the actions. Yes. But it's not exactly prop it's not exactly proposition. And you know, yep. partly because I would say if you look at good and evil, for example, mm. it's not that easy to make the case that good is more dominant or more powerful than evil, all things considered in human affairs. Now I think it is, but you know what I mean? You can't make a compelling propositional case that that's absolutely true. But you can reflect your faith in your actions. My sense is Christians, turn to yourself. You're a problem. You can fix yourself. You do that, and the other things are going to sort themselves out of their own accord. And I do believe that. And I actually believe that that message is in some sense centrally Christian. It's like, look to yourself and be the example. And that's the best way of, of let's say, convincing other people if that's what you're interested in. And it's also the only real effective way of bringing peace. let he who can tell the best story win and then that story also has the best actors so to speak right and so i would say the proper mode to conversion is something like shining example and then if you're governed by a doctrine that is in fact divine and you're managing to embody that in the sense that gives you the glow the charismatic glow of embodied divinity two steps removed, let's say, and people are willing to abide by your words as a consequence, well, more power to you. And that's a lot more efficient and effective than compulsory war, or armed conflict, or any of those things. And it may be the case that we'll find that the better we are, the more we're like each other. I mean, wouldn't that be a kind of union under something approximating God? That all good men could see in each other a reflection of something that was the highest? And yeah. that that could be compelling in and of itself? Christ from a psychological perspective and the, the critic, the critic, my critic, this particular critic that I've been reading said, well, that, that doesn't differentiate Christ much from a whole sequence of dying and resurrecting mythological gods. And of course, people have made that claim in comparative religion. Joseph Campbell did that and Jung to a lesser degree, I would say, but Campbell did that. But the difference, and C.S. Lewis pointed this out as well, the difference between those mythological gods and Christ was that there's a, there's a representation of, there's a historical representation of his, of, of his existence as well. Now you can debate whether or not that's genuine. You can debate about whether or not he actually lived and whether there's credible objective evidence for that, but it doesn't matter in some sense because this, well it does, but there's a sense in which it doesn't matter because there's still a historical story. And so what you have in the figure of Christ is an actual person who actually lived plus a myth. And in some sense, Christ is the union of those two things. The problem is, is I probably believe that, but I don't know. Okay. I don't, I'm amazed at my own belief and I don't understand it. Like, because I've seen Sometimes the objective world and the narrative world touch. You know, that's Jungian synchronicity. And I've seen that many times in my own life. And so in some sense, I believe it's undeniable. You know, we have a narrative sense of the world. For me, that's been the world of morality. That's the world that tells us how to act. It's real, like we treat it like it's real. It's not the objective world, but the narrative and the objective world touch. And the ultimate example of that in principle is supposed to be Christ. But I don't know what to, and that seems to me oddly plausible.